this afternoon, we're going to spend some time together in workshops, which I think is, in a sense, overdue. You've had quite a lot of show and tell. But we have got two more things we would really like to share with everybody. Um, the first one is on the screen, innovation and inclusion. And it's time to welcome back Emily Cherry. Can you expect these rounds of applause every to everywhere I go now? You, you understand? Yeah, now we're back in rooms together. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to take a couple of quick moments uh, to welcome you back from lunch. Um, I hope everyone actually got the actual opportunity to eat something. Just to talk about why for us at the Trust, innovation and inclusion is at the heart of our approach and why it absolutely matters so much. And then give you a sneak peek into some of the innovation and inclusion work that we'll be doing over the next, uh, next year. So we've set ourselves a number of um, innovation themes that will really uh, form the core heart of our business plan uh, for the next 12 months. So you've already heard uh, this morning to us talk about inclusion, this um, wonderful opportunity and exciting announcement we'll make shortly about top-up funding for SEND placings. Um, you're also going to hear this afternoon um, a little bit more about our digitization program. So um, great that Dan and the team from Brunel University are speaking next to talk about some of the uh, work on immersive reality. But we're also scoping, and the wonderful Simon Howarth is somewhere in the room, um, who's our digital project manager, and he's going to be scoping an entire new way that we can get your booking systems to talk to our system in terms of link and save time and effort. Um, but we're also going to take it further than that we're actually going to launch a new parent carer hub um, and that will include all of the evaluation and monitoring work that you heard um, the minister talk about this morning. We're also launching uh, a new evidence and impact framework. We're designing, developing, and working with the Department for Transport's team. Um, you've heard me talk this morning about the importance of being a data-driven organization um, and we're, we're baking that into our work. And then we're also um, hoping to announce, uh, we haven't got all of this over the line, but we're very committed to having a look at more pilot work. We want to look at community delivery of bike ability, so where you can train teachers, TAs, community leaders, like we're doing in our widening participation projects already, to deliver bike ability alongside instructors. And we also, I, th I don't know how many people have heard us say this before, but we need to rebrand level three. So we're going to do a rebrand of level three um, to be able to make this a really exciting and innovative secondary school focused program that's attractive to teens. And then also the team are doing a lot of work on micromobility as well. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on e-cycle training and more work on e-scooters as well. We've already set out, and you've heard this morning, so I'm not going to dwell too much, but I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to have the widening participation projects launch, the 44 projects um, that are across England, and we've got TRL doing the evaluation on those. You'll have also heard um, through repeated comms, we've got the ADI project, so driver education, which is shortly coming to a close. The evaluation by Ipsos Mori um, will come out, and then the department will look at what next for that program of um, opportunity to train the next generation of drivers as cyclists via approved driving instructors. And then we have um, a lot of thoughts around e-cycle training. Some of them have come directly from you in the industry who are already doing that. But we think there's absolutely a program for adults around e-cycles that involves um, a, a different levels of training and support for adults to take on e-cycles. We know this is the future, so we need to make sure that the trust and our training providers is at the forefront of being able to deliver a new program for that. And then the wonderful Simon, as I've mentioned, scoping this uh, way that we can get our systems to talk better to your systems and then develop what we think is a really exciting opportunity through digital means to develop a much more effective way to extend the bikeability brand. I think you may have heard me say before in various different webinars, this badge or the badges that we give out should be a bit like the Blue Peter badge. It should unlock a whole series of opportunities for parents, carers, children and families to extend their cycling experience and journey. So we can do some more targeted resources work, we can do some opportunities with partners um, to be able to do that. So we've got a huge, exciting digitization agenda um, that will run across the next 12 months. So I am hugely excited about what we can uh, be delivering through innovation, and it's why we've really baked into our next 12 months um, the inclusion and innovation as the two core features of our work. And we'll obviously take lots of questions about it later on. If you 
haven't submitted your question to Ask the Trust, now's the time. Um, we're going to be looking at those fairly shortly, so I'm making a final plea to get your question in um, so that you can he hear more about our work. So the future, every child, um, absolutely, we know that is there. Uh, we know that uh, certainly that we are working on what does that program look like, what's the funding levels that are needed for it. The influencing opportunity is Active Travel England as it is now being set up. But we're also pushing really hard on developing that adult offer as well. Um, we have an adult offer. We have one set of cycle instructors who are registered with us at the Trust, and there is no reason why an adult offer could not come through Bikeability. Would it be called Bikeability? That's all for discussion and debate. But there is definitely um, encouraging family cycling and developing that adult offer. It absolutely has to be part of the future. And I really want us to make bikeability, you know, the most famous, increasing our visibility and getting that opportunity for the badge to really unlock huge amounts of opportunities to help our, our riders and our families cycle with confidence and continue that journey. So hugely exciting and we can't do it without you. So you're always going to get a plea from me to work with us uh, to make sure that this is a journey we take together. So that's me, Philip. <laughs> um, special plea from me, um, which I haven't shared with Emily yet. Um, E-cycles, the future is electric. Um, it is quite extraordinary that um, in this country there are only sold each year 150,000 electric bicycles. In Germany, in 2021, they were very disappointed because of supply problems, only to be able to sell 2.1 million. Um, that is where we are going. It is really a phenomenal opportunity. Bicycle Association has been pushing the Department for Transport very hard on something which has worked in every European country, which is a direct subsidy for the purchase of an electric bike, which started about 1,500 pounds. Um, I think the department would quite like to do it. Um, the Treasury think it's um, actually a middle class benefit, um, which is there's no evidence for at all. So I'm really excited about the idea that electric is going to be part of the bikeability program in future. And if you wonder um, about um, electric bicycles being only 150,000. Um, there's no prize for knowing how many illegal electric scooters uh, were sold last year. 492,000. 492,000. That means there are now about a million illegal electric scooters on the road. I don't know what the government's going to do about it, but then neither do they. Thank you.